Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of the Swing 101 mini series. In this episode, we're going to apply pretty much everything that we've learned in the past couple episodes of this series to create a simple GUI. Before we begin, um, just a couple of notes about this episode. First of all, this episode assumes that you've watched all of the previous videos in the Swing 101 mini-series. Essentially, what we're going to do today is we're going to take everything that we've learned and then use it to make a small little project. So you're, you're going to want to know, uh, you know everything that we're going to be using today by watching the previous Swing 101 videos. This video also assumes that you have watched the Java 101 video on embedded resources. That will be necessary for one little part uh, in this video. Um, so you're probably going to want to check that out. That's the Java 101 video on embedded resources. Uh, it was posted, I think, two days before this one. Uh, all right. One other thing about this episode, uh, the way that this is going to be structured is it's sort of like a little review of everything that we've done uh, so far. You're not really going to learn anything um, new, but it's always good practice to take what you've learned uh, and instead of what I've been doing, just displaying everything um, you know, on one panel, we're going to actually make something that looks nice and that could function if you added a little bit of extra programming to it. Um, and throughout the video, I am going to uh, ask questions. If you want to play along uh, with the review and see how much you remember by heart, feel free to pause the video. I'll give a few seconds break. Uh, just, you know, for, as we go along, I'll ask the questions, pause a few seconds, and then uh, basically tell uh, the correct answer. So if you want to pause the video uh, and think about it and see how much of it you can remember uh, by heart. And also, I'm going to have open the Swing 101 class that has uh, all the stuff we've been using. You guys can use it as like a little cheat sheet, and I'm probably going to use it to just copy like this part of the code that's not worth remembering and typing out, but that is still uh, necessary. Uh, one last thing. Today, we're going, uh, as our example, we're going to make a login GUI. So basically, uh, I'll just show you what ours is going to look like. Uh, this is the client program from uh, something that I've made called Chit Chat. It's a server client chat program where uh, you can create an account and then make chat rooms uh, with other people and talk to them. And there's a server component of this. Uh, but I'm not going to show you that. I'm just going to show you this is what my GUI looks like. It has this little Chit Chat logo. Uh, then right here is the box for the username. Right here is a box for the password. And then right there is where the server IP would go. So like the, you know, uh, IP address and the uh, port. We're obviously not going to have that. But then there's also a login and register button. I don't have the server running, so I can't show it to you. Uh, but we're basically going to make this except um, to get this little part, like the, to get this chat part centered within the whole um, frame, it required a little bit of hackery. So I'm not going to go through and uh, show that part today. So ours will just start up at the very top and go down. So it won't be centered. And then we're also obviously not going to have a uh, server IP box. Uh, and then the login and register buttons won't actually do anything, although here they would. I can show you that here it's going to try to connect, and then it's supposed to make a pop-up message if it doesn't, which it might not. Um, all right, so that's the... GUI that we're going to try to make. Uh, when you're thinking about making a GUI, it's usually a good idea to get a picture of it in your head, uh, and then you can, you know, look back at it. I'm actually going to leave this open because uh, it's always a good idea to just look back at your picture or the idea in your head, and then figure out, okay, what components and layouts do I need to do this? So to go ahead and get started, we're first going to um, define a J frame. Hang on. Okay, and then. I'm just going to grab the rest of this code. It's just for like setting all of the logistics of the uh, frame. And it's not that important. Uh, and then we'll, let's not make it cyan. And then we will uh, do the layout manager soon. Okay, so 
first thing, I guess we might as well get to that. So the first question of the day is what layout manager, ignoring the login and register buttons, uh, which are side by side, which layout uh, manager would you use to get the logo, then the two fields, and then this area with the buttons to align uh, vertically side by side, like down from up and down? The correct answer, or one of the correct answers, uh, would be the box layout, and then using the y-axis um, uh, constructor parameter, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and say frame.setLayout, new box layout. Now, uh, do you guys remember, it's kind of like an extra credit, do you remember the one important thing uh, that you need to do with a box layout, and especially um, when you're using a J-frame instead of, you know, some other kind of a container? The answer is that when you're using a J-frame, you need to do frame.getContentPane. Uh, if you're using like a J panel or some other component, you could just do, you know, frame or panel or whatever it's called. But here you actually have to do get content pane or else you'll get an error. And then we're also going to do box layout dot and then we want Y axis. So that will align everything so that it is going uh, it's going down. Now the next question, did I really close out of that application again? Okay. So the next question, let's go ahead and get this opened up, is um, what component, what J component are we going to use to display the uh, logo? The correct answer is a J label. J labels are used to display text, images, or both. Uh, now, this is where that part about the embedded resources video comes into play. So if you haven't seen it, you might not understand this next part. Uh, but now we're going to actually uh, go ahead and load in uh, the image of the logo. And the logo that we're going to be using, uh, rather than that like chit-chat logo thing that I made, is we're going to use this avatar. It's a 500 by 500 box, so it's uh, plenty big, possibly even too big, but we'll see. Um, so the first thing that we want to do here is create our resources folder, then we want to copy and paste our uh, image, and just because I like lowercase letters, I'm going to name it avatar with a lowercase a. Okay, so now let's actually go ahead and load in the image, and then we'll construct a uh, J label out of the image. So first we're going to go ahead and say uh, buffered image image. Then we're going to, we need to do this inside of a try and catch because there is a chance that it could go wrong. Um, and then we want to say image is equal to image io dot read. Oops. Then we're going to say, um, in this case, it would be login gui dot class dot get resource slash res slash avatar dot png so then we have this buffered image which is so we're gonna read in this image here um, and then we're going to say uh, j label um, logo we'll call it and then what we're gonna do is we're going to say if image is equal to null then we want the logo to just say null image uh, if it's not then we don't, and this it's very, uh, it's pretty much impossible that this would happen, but you know, you always want to be sure. Uh, so logo is equal to new J label, um, could not load logo. And remember, this will probably, sorry about that, this will probably uh, never happen. Uh, and then we can just say else uh, logo is equal to new J label, and then we want to do new image icon and then image. So there is a J label constructor that takes in an image icon and then for the image icon we give it an image. An image icon is it just it's sort of like the swing version of buffered image and I think it contains a little bit of extra information than buffered image has. Uh, but you just have to do that. It's not terribly important. 
And then once we have this logo constructed, we want to go ahead and add the logo. So we might as well, or sorry, frame.addLogo. Might as well run this and see how it's doing so far. And let's go ahead and let that run. And wait. And I don't know why it's being so slow. It usually isn't. And okay, so there you go. This is obviously a very big logo. Guess I might as well show you guys a little trick that you can do with this. Uh, but as you can see, it does load in uh, this image. Now, if you want to center this um, horizontally, then you would say uh, right here, logo.setAlignmentX um, to be component.centerAlignment. So if we go ahead and run it again, then you'll see that uh, should center it, and that obviously did work. Uh, now, one thing I'm just going to show you, if this is confusing, then there's no need to worry about it at all. Uh, but what we want to do is... Um, this image is 500 by 500, which is quite large, so we're going to actually go ahead and resize it. You could open it in an image editing program and resize it in the file, but let's say that you wanted to have one file and you wanted to um, resize it in the program. This is how you would do it, and again, it's not very important, but image is equal to image.getScaledInstance, and then you give it a width, a height, and the hints is just going to be zero. Uh, but the width, if it's 500 by 500, let's just make it 200 by 200. And then, is that going to be, okay. And then I think we just want to say, new buffered image, like that. Is that going to work or no? No, it's not. Okay. Um, okay, so then we can just call this an image. And that works. We want to use the image just like that. All right, so now if we go ahead and run it, and again, don't worry too much about that part, but as you can see, it was now resized in the program to be 200 by 200 uh, instead of you know actually changing the file. That's just a cool little thing that you can do, and it probably made this video about a minute longer. I might not have, should have done it, but... Uh, anyways, the next thing under that is going to be the username and password. So what um, J component do we use for the username? It's one single line of text, uh, and it's just regular text. Input. Okay, so the uh, correct answer would be the J text field. If you guess J text area or J text uh, pane. Either of those would technically work, but they're for multi-line, and with a username and password, or in this case just a username, you would obviously just want to have a single um, one. So we'll go ahead and say J text field uh, username equal to new J text field, and then we can go ahead and just say username as our uh, so by default, it'll just say username. Then we want to do, um, we want to username.setAlignmentX so that it, we can center it, and then frame.addUsername. So if you go ahead and run it now, let's see how it looks. All right, so we have our um, logo up here, 200 by 200, and then we have the username. And now you'll notice that the username is really big. It takes up basically uh, whatever this doesn't take up the logo is taken up by the username. So the way that you would want to fix this is you would say username dot set maximum size to be new dimension and then that'll take in a width by a height. So the width let's just say is a uh, hundred that might be too big and then the height let's say will be 20. 20 is the uh, height, height for pretty much all of these components um, like a single line of text uh, in here, or a button, or a single line of uh, text in a J label. So 20 is the magic number for the height. But as you can see, uh, the width is now 100, uh, so we can actually make that a little bit bigger. And the height is now 20. So let's go ahead and run it now. And that's looking a bit better. We might want to, uh, you know, stretch it out a little bit more. 
but otherwise it's looking pretty good. Let's just try making it 400. See if that'll make me happy. All right, so that's good. Now one thing uh, that I'll quickly, quickly, quickly show you as a little helper, if you want to add space really quickly, um, you can just go ahead and add, you do box dot um, create, and then you can choose either a horizontal strut or a vertical strut. So if you want this to go horizontally, uh, then you would use a horizontal strut, but we want this to go vertically, and then you can type in the height. So let's say 10 pixels, and now if I go ahead and run it, you'll see that there's a gap of 10 pixels in between them. So if you want to quickly add uh, a little bit of space, that's the easiest way to do it. So next up is going to be the password. And you could use a J text field for this, but there's actually a better component that's made for passwords. Can you guess what the name is? The answer is the J password field. The difference between the J password field and the J text field is that the password field replaces all of the characters that you enter um, with the bullet point, which looks like that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and define one of these. And I'm just going to be lazy and copy this code and change it. So this is a J password field, uh, which we will obviously call password. And this is going to be a new J password field. And then we'll go ahead and give it password. Uh, you might not want to give it for the J password field because you wouldn't be able to read that it says password. But, uh, you know, then we want to change these method calls to be on... Uh, password. So we're going to set the size again, uh, we're going to set the alignment X, and then we're going to add it. And then in between username and password, let's go ahead and add another vertical strut right there. Um, and now as you can see we have the username and the password. So that is working well. The last thing to do are these two buttons. Uh, but as you notice, these two buttons are right next to each other. If you wanted to just have the two buttons stacked on top of each other, you could just add both of them to the frame and let the box layout uh, work just fine. But if you want to actually have them next to each other, how exactly would you go about doing that? The answer is that you would use a J panel with a different layout manager. Now, I'm not sure if I touched on this in a previous video or not, but a J panel is basically a container. It works the same as a J frame, except that it's not its own window. So a J panel is sort of like a piece of the J frame. So you can add a little J panel, and I quit out of the application again. You can add a little J panel and then um, you know have a custom layout and then add it to the frame. So the way that this works is we have the window has a box layout Y axis going down and then that's added, that's added, that's added, that's added. Then this piece right here is a J panel that has an X axis box layout and then added to that is login and register. So that's added to the panel and then the panel's added to the frame. Uh, so that'll make more sense in just a second. First, we need to go ahead and define the J panel, and we'll call this uh, button panel is equal to new J panel. Now, I think I just said this a second ago, but what layout manager would you use to have it go horizontally? There are actually two answers here. All right, it would be either a box layout, x-axis, or a flow layout. Now, I personally love box layouts. I don't know why, but I'm just going to use a box layout. So button panel dot set layout, new box layout. And here you just say button panel, because there's no get content pane uh, me uh, method on there. So just button panel, and then box layout, sorry, box layout. And then this is going to be an x-axis because we want it to go across. And then we'll say button panel, or no, sorry, uh, frame.add button panel. But in between there, let's go ahead and define uh, both of the buttons. So if you couldn't already figure it out, what class are you supposed to use for a button? It's uh, obviously going to be a J button. So J button username is equal to new J button or sorry not username it's gonna be login and it's going to the buttons going to say login uh, and then we obviously 
I don't believe that you need to set the maximum size for this, but we'll see if you do. Um, we'll say login dot. Sorry, the maximum size if I said that wrong. But we do want to set the alignment X to be centered. And then we want to add this to the button panel and not the uh, frame because we're going to add this to the panel and then the panel is going to be added to the frame. Next up, we're going to do pretty much the same thing for register. Um, so new J button that will say register. Um, register dot set alignment X to be component dot center alignment and then button panel dot add register and then finally we add this button panel to the frame so now let's go ahead and run it and there you go I'm just gonna quickly throw in another vertical strut uh, right there so between the password and the button area and as you can see, I'll go ahead and put that side by side with the client that I've probably closed 10 times now, even though I didn't mean to. And we'll see how they check out. So uh, it looks very good. Uh, there, it obviously does look pretty similar. Uh, both of them do look pretty similar here. So we have the logo, the nice logo, the username and password, and then the login and register buttons. Now obviously these login and register buttons won't do anything, uh, so you would have to add an action listener if you actually wanted it to do anything. But this video was just uh, made to kind of take all that we've learned about the components and the layout manager and the JFrame and put it into a little, um, I guess it's kind of like a mini project or just creating an actual GUI out of the stuff instead of just adding everything to the same frame and saying, look, here it is. Um, so as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn, uh, if it's about components or techniques or anything, or if you have ideas for these kind of videos. Also, whether or not you liked a video like this, uh, because especially with Swing, uh, it's important to take what you've learned and actually you know, make GUIs with Swing, uh, because, you know, Swing is made for GUI, so there's no sense in just, you know, adding a bunch of components to a panel. You want to make it coherent and actually do something. So if you like this kind of video, uh, or if there are examples uh, that you want to see of things like this, but other GUIs we could make, uh, please let me know in the description. Um, and, uh, let's see. If you like this video, click the like button. Thank you guys. I'll see you with some more coding videos soon, and goodbye for now.